Good morning, Good morning everyone and welcome to a Tuesday. Yay, we love Tuesdays. I've had a haircut since you've last seen me. I'm due one. I've got yeah. one booked. I'm very excited. <laughs> and on our last <laughs> thought for the day, we talked about Romans 4 and that we are justified by faith alone. And so today we thought it'd be only natural to pick <laughs> the complete opposite of that passage yeah. uh, from James, James 2. 2. And so <laughs> if you don't know what we said on our last thought for the day, you have to go and watch Pause. it. Pause. Go and watch it. Yeah. Come back. Come back to us today, and Gemma is then going to read our yes, passage. from James 2, and we're reading uh, from verse 14 to 19, but I'm going to read the Passion oh, Translation, um, because... It's a bit different and It's a bit nice. different, and we like it. And it says this. My dear brothers and sisters, what good is it if someone claims to have faith, but demonstrates no good works to prove it? How could this kind of faith save anyone? For example, if a brother or sister in the faith is poorly clothed and hungry... And you leave them saying, goodbye, I hope you stay warm and have plenty to eat. But you don't provide them with a coat or even a cup of soup. What good is your faith? So then faith that doesn't involve action is phony. But someone might object and say, one person has faith and another has works. Go ahead then and prove to me that you have faith without works and I will show you faith by my works as proof that I believe. You can believe all you want there is one true God, that's wonderful. But even the demons know this and tremble with fear before him. Yet they are unchanged. They remain demons. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So the book of James, as we learnt about in our sermon series on James a while back now. Mm -hmm. It was like a very long time ago. I it? think it was uh, a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about uh, Christian living. And while this passage might come across a bit blunt and very challenging, uh, it's actually really helpful for me at least in thinking about how mm -hmm. I live my life and my faith. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so... Music, as is probably no surprise to you all, is one of my passions in life. <laughs> I like music. Do you? Uh, I do. And I especially wow. love getting all geeky about guitar pedals, which like make it, the guitar sound all clever and fancy. Yep. Uh, drumsticks and various other gear. Massive drum kit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've even made my own guitar pedal. Yep. So it's bright yellow. I painted it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't going to be me that painted it. No. Um, and so you've probably seen all these bits and bobs, or really some of it, in... Uh, various Sunday morning services back in the day uh, or on a YouTube video that we might have done and it's been a long process of finding out what I like uh, what I don't like what works well with all the other stuff that I've got and what looks the best which is obviously the most important <laughs> um, and it spent I could spend ages tinkering uh, with all these effects and making sure it all right and it all just sits there uh, trying to get the perfect sound or find the thing that I need to do just what I want it to do um, but what good is all of that tinkering, that time and effort and money uh, spent on making flashing lights look clever, <laughs> uh, if actually I couldn't play guitar? Mm. What good is all this time spent making trying to find the perfect guitar sound if I couldn't share that guitar sound with others? All the faith and the knowledge of that is all meaningless if I can't even like strum a chord. And so we can all get super passionate and enthusiastic about things in our church life. Uh, home groups, Bible studies, listening to an hour of worship music, uh, attending church every Sunday online or in person. Uh, and of course, these are all a really healthy part of our Christian lives and mm -hmm. Christian living. But the whole point of this passage in James is uh, to get across what good is it attending home groups, attending church or listening to worship music if it doesn't change our behaviour and make us more like Jesus. Just like, what good is it spending all this time trying to perfect a guitar sound if I can't even play guitar? <laughs> we are first and foremost justified by our faith in God. But As that, you know from it, Romans. Yes, from our last one. <laughs> but that faith should transform how we live, what we do, and should be apparent to those around us. Even the demons believe in God, but as James says, they remain unchanged. The evidence of our faith is apparent in our actions and our behaviour. It may look different for all of us. So for some of us, it might be baking lemon drizzle cakes for after church mm -hmm. or Mars bar cakes. Um, <laughs> for others, it might be preaching and teaching and sharing um, God's love with other people and sharing your passion for that. Um, or it could mean taking a small step to tell a friend how you felt God at work in your life and being bold and, and telling people about Jesus. Mm. Um, or making an extra effort to love our neighbours. Um, and all these things and more are expressions of how we are changed by our faith. So the challenge for us 
I think today is considering how we have been changed by our faith in God. How do our actions and our behaviours show our love for God? And so while writing this as well, there are about a million other things we could have <laughs> talked about. So I do encourage you to go and read this and try and yeah, yeah, dig into through. it a bit read, more. Read it again. Uh, because five minutes or however long this is going to be is not nearly enough time to dig into it all. Uh, but it's no. a fantastic passage to start off with. Yeah. So enjoy the rest of your day. Have a lovely Tuesday. Yeah, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, bye. See ya.